the Lord have been good to us. And we are enjoying God. In the midst of hardship, we still can say we are enjoying the Lord. His goodness outweighs any hardship that you have or ever will face. Uh, I want to say to Sister Boykins, if you're in the house, if you get the printout of the announcements, I need them uh, ASAP. I need them right away. I don't see anything, nothing at all, but if you gave them to somebody, uh, please get them to me so I can make these announcements for the ministers in California and other areas. So I don't have anything. I see your hand waving back there. All right, well, whoever brother you gave them to, This is one announcement, and I sent you several. I only have one, so go back and check your text messages and do your first work over. <laughs> what the ministers be blowing up my phone. We always want people to know what's going on in their area. Uh, this announcement is old. So, uh, no. All right. To you that are in the Raleigh, North Carolina area, are in the Richmond, Virginia area, all of Richmond, Virginia, yeah. I want you to pay attention. So, Sister Boykins, if you're able to find it, you can tip out while I'm announcing. Print them out, bring them back. Amen. You can do that. You, you'll get the word of God in you. You can download it on your phone while you're walking across the parking lot. So you that is in uh, Richmond, Virginia on July 18th at the Four Points by Sheraton Hotel. Address is 47 South Lumberton Avenue in Richmond, Virginia. Services will be held at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Brother Minister Lodge of the Raleigh, North Carolina Temple and the saints of Raleigh, North Carolina, surrounding area will be there. Uh, you that are in Richmond, Virginia, on July 18th. The location is Four Points by Sheraton Hotel. The address is 4700 South Laburnum Avenue, Richmond, Virginia. On July 18th, services will be there, 11 a.m., 3 in the afternoon, 3 p.m. You all are welcome. To leave your churches. Now you can leave before then. Wonderful. But you come on. Now I want to remind everybody. We hope to see all of you. Once I get back in America. In July. The 14th through the 17th. Amen. The 14th through the 17th. We will have our international holy convocation. Amen. And as I said before. Well. You won't see us until then, because when I get back, rest is on the table. Uh, we start out in London and end up in Italy, and the brothers and sisters from overseas are anxiously waiting. So between each stop, we get some days rest, whether it's one day, whether it's two. It's better than no rest at all. I'm pretty sure it won't be much because our body still will be adapting to the time change. Some errors is five, some is six, some maybe seven, I don't know. But uh, nevertheless, we're looking to be there. God be our helper. We'll be back on July 4th, if I'm not mistaken. And then we'll be here for the month of July resting. And God willing, I see you in Greensboro hanging out with the truth of the gospel. Don't look at me smiling, Logan. That goes for you, too. <laughs> Amen. If you run up on any problems, then I'm looking to see you, Logan. Stay on them, Kevin. I don't care if you got to put them in a UPS brown box. You ship them there. <laughs> Everything. The brothers and sisters from Europe, from the Asia Minor continents, 
from Africa, from India, all across the Caribbean. We even got letters coming in from Cambodia, Korea, and Japan looking to be in the conference. Some will be their first time coming to America. And it's a blessing to come for the first time to such an ungodly country for a godly purpose. It's a blessing. Now I want to just update everybody. God have did it for the church again. I'm going. <laughs> I believe it was Friday or Thursday of last weekend. God bless us to make settlement on another new temple. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. He blessed us with a new temple. Uh, I believe it's in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wonderful. Wonderful temple there. Wonderful. Amen. And we don't have a mortgage. Yes. Amen. That's the blessing of the Lord. So we give God thanks. Yes, the Lord is blessing us. We're in, uh, it is amazing. We don't have a mortgage at all. I'm grateful for the saints' hard work and their support. So the members of the truth of God can see where their money is going. Our broadcast alone is over $700,000 a year. Our broadcast bill. And Gabriel ain't bringing that change from heaven. <laughs> Tithing and offering oh, yeah. is what's pushing this message around the world. And building churches and feeding the hungry. Yeah. And clothing the naked. Oh, yes. We believe in doing all of it. Or God don't give you credit for doing any of it. So we thank God for this. We thank God for the many blessings. So that all the new followers out of St. Louis, Missouri, Kansas City, Iowa, Boston, Massachusetts, where we were just there and baptized 124. Seattle, Washington, <coughs> to all of my brothers and sisters all across America, Canada, and the world. Thank God. I hope to see all of you in July. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we can wish up God and beat the devil across oh, yeah. his head with scripture. Yeah. All right, let me update you. We have a good size list here. As I mentioned, 124 in Boston, Massachusetts. 17 in headquarters, 7 in New Brunswick, New Jersey. And I want to greet Pastor Taylor. We continue to pray for you. Mother Taylor, we thank God for you too. Oh, yeah. 10 in Bronx, New York. 5 in Baltimore. 1 in Del Mar, Delaware. 4 in Charlotte, North Carolina. 6 in Rocky Mount. 2 in Raleigh, North Carolina. 2 in Florence. 1 in Columbia. 20 in Atlanta, Georgia. 4 in Augusta, Georgia. 5 in Mobile. 2 in Tallahassee, Florida. Four in Orlando, Orlando, Florida. Thirteen in San Antonio, Texas. Six in Houston. Two in Fresno, California. Two in uh, Los Angeles. One in Modesto, California. One in Val, Valsolia, uh, California. One in Monroe, Louisiana. Two in Detroit. Five in North Chicago. Seven in Memphis. One in Minnesota. One in Portsmouth, six in Lafayette, Louisiana, five in Las Vegas, Nevada, 20 in Columbus, Ohio, international baptism, three in Toronto, Canada, six in uh, French Guyana, two in Trinidad, 22 in Jamaica, one in Dubai, one in Germany, five in Birmingham, England, 32 in North India, nine in Ghana, 31 in Tanzania, 53 in Zambia, 3 in Johannesburg, 455 souls. <laughs> That's wonderful, isn't it? Isn't that a blessing? That's a two-week report. 455 souls in two weeks. Can you imagine such? Say what you want about it. 
without a shadow of a doubt, truly it's the Lord's doing. And it, it is marvelous in your eyes. And a day like today, the constant requests that we are getting from around the world, as I often tell the people, I'm only one man. People sometimes get upset. Washington, D.C., I heard you, God willing. Uh, we, we'll try to get to you this year. People writing me, laying me out. When you coming to Washington? Well, they pretty much laying me out across the country and in foreign countries. Some people write me, Pastor Jennings, drop what you're doing, come where I'm at. And they be way in North Korea. You know, so I, I get tons of letters of starving people. Yeah. Bible says there's a famine in the land. God saw it. Thank God and moved on to prophet Amos to relate it to us. He said there's a famine in the land, not for bread nor for water, but for hearing the word of God. So there's a state of starvation that the people are in. And it is. And this is why so people are shocked to see so many thousands. Coming to the truth of God. And remember the announcement. Uh, the announcement was that today in reference to the mailing to help Sister Bailey. And where is that supposed to take place? Second floor in the gym. All right, so I need about 50 to 75 sisters, volunteers. They give Sister Bailey a hand. We have over 9,000 postcards to send out. Folks who want to come to the convention. So I need between 75 to 100 sisters to meet Sister Belly in the gym. Be there. Be there. The church needs your help, so go on over there and help her. Amen. Amen. And let's get these things done. The Bible said we're helpers of one another. I don't expect for three or four sisters to send out over close to 10,000 cars. No, that, that wouldn't be logical good sense. So between 75 and 100 of you, you go on over there now. Thanks, brother. Ha! Hey, I just announced that already. Already announced that one. I need the other ones from California. I just did July. You gave him July. I need California and all that. Just check your phone and... Go back and keep looking. Go to work. Because if you don't, I'm going to work on you all day. <laughs> Amen. Sister Boykins, I want the world to know. I'm working on my secretary, Sister Boykins. She's going back out again, shaking her head at me. I'm pretty sure she'll be throwing, once in a while, she'll do the Williams at me, you know. Amen. So to all my ministers, if, you're, if your announcements don't get announced, I want you to get my secretary, Sister Boykins. You, you get her straightened out. All right, family, let's dive into the book of pain and get ready to go to work. Williams, let's get busy. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, we'll start at verse 1. Follow me. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, and at the very first verse. Yes. A wise judge. A wise judge. Judge will instruct his people. Isn't that the truth? Amen. That's what's wrong with me. Yeah, that's right. I want the people to be saved so bad, so bad. So bad until I don't care nothing about how much damage we do to your feelings. That's right. If stand up all night, having pains, crying, vomiting from the message, Make you get into the kingdom of God with God. That's right. I'm going to work on you every chance I get. That's right. I love the human family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To all my enemies, I love your hell-bound soul too. Right. You're a heathen. Who? You. But I love you anyway, you bunch of heathens. That's right. Many are not used to the word of God being preached up in your face. They're used to being pet, yeah. massaged, wickedness looked over, yeah. not looked at. No. That's why I denounced the song. 
He looked beyond all my faults and saw my needs. That's an insult to God. Right. If God will look beyond your faults, then he ain't going to pay him no mind. No. no. God look at our faults, and that's why he know what we need. That's right. He don't look beyond them. No. He look at them. Right. If he didn't look at them, our faults wouldn't be in the Bible. That's right. How will he look at our faults so close? All of them are documented in the Bible. That's right. Even our future faults is in there. Oh, yes. Our dreams is in there. That's right. Our subconscious dreams is in there. Yeah. You're 12 now and your deeds at 25 is already recorded. Thou, oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. What? Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. Here, chapter and verse, let's see, is, is, is he looking beyond or is he looking at? Psalms 139 and at verse 1. Follow me, viewers. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. Thou have searched me. Oh, Lord, thou have investigated me. That's right. Huh? That's right. Even God put an investigation on you. Oh, yes. You know, when, uh, when, uh, when the police go into your house, we're here to search. You got a search warrant. Yes. They're investigating the premises. That's right. Pull you over, pet you down. What? Search you. Investigating. Going all in your pockets. <laughs> That's right. Seeing what kind of evil they can discover down there. That's right. Human family, God is putting a search out. Oh, yes. He already know what's going on in you, your hard head. Oh, yes. He know. Oh, yes. But he's searching. Searching. Evaluating. I remember years ago, uh, Williams might remember. Man, it may have been, uh, wow, will it make us sound old, don't it? Maybe <laughs> about close to 50 years ago. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may remember, Williams, me, you, and Romy, Rome. We was on his porch, and Rome asked the question uh -huh. that if Jesus came knocking on your door and you had rock and roll records, blues records, all type of records, would you, if he knocked on his door, would you take the records and hide them? Or would you keep playing them? Which is a very good question. I told him, I said, I'll keep playing mine. He said, Nikki. Isn't that disrespecting Jesus? I say, I admit it is, but the Bible says Jesus of Nazareth knew all things. Right. See, he already know what I'm doing before he get there. That's right. And you know what he said? I asked a question and I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Jesus of Nazareth know all things. All things. So in order to stop any kind of wrong, I want you to hear me good. You first, and this is the most difficult thing, the wrong have to become displeasurable to you. Yeah. Well, you might as well get a benediction now. Oh, yeah. Because wrong make many folk, if not 99.9, .9, depending upon what that wrong is, it make you feel good. Right. Let the church say amen. amen. You can say it louder than you say it. Amen. <laughs> Put a smile on your face. Put a spring in your step. A pop in your finger. Why? Because wrong work in favor of the filling of our flesh. That's right. That's true. And this is why God don't want flesh and blood to inherit the kingdom of God because God don't want no past actions, past thoughts, past wants, past lusts to be present with him in eternity. That's right. That's why he sent a preaching now of flesh Destruction. That's right. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, yes. He sent a message of flesh destruction. That's right. That's why the, that's why the false prophets and hypocrites don't like this message. Yeah. Right. Because when you go to the church, there's no flesh is destroyed. No. That's right. Mm -mm, no, man. God unleashed scripture. 
the, the, the scriptures is like a virus being unleashed. That's right. What's, what's wrong with you? I caught the truth. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Somebody say, what? The, I, I caught the truth. I came down with the truth. Amen. What's the symptoms? Man, I'm starting to hate everything. That's right. My eyes is running. What you crying for? Because it's hurting. Hurting. What? I came down with the truth of God. That's right. And that's what God will is. Oh, yes. It captures man's mind. Oh, yes. It arrests man's emotion. Yeah. And it alters man's deed. That's right. The purpose of the changing of the mind and the changing of the heart and the changing of the body because God wants to create a new man. A new man. For himself. That's right. Man now is in a fallen state. Oh, yeah. He first fell. When he disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden. That's right. That's true. And man been falling ever since. Ever since. So the Lord instituted a remedy yeah. to get the bend out of man's back. Yeah. That he may come back to be upright straight. That's right. His first birth put a bend in his nature. Yeah. So the Lord come along and say, well, I, I give him a new birth. That's right. I give him the opportunity to get back to the state he was before he fell. Oh, yes. Oh, so God instituted the new birth, yeah. water, and spirit, and spirit that will straighten man back out and straighten him up. That's right. And once man straightened up, now God has to put a brace on him yeah. with right. the scripture. That's right. To keep him straight. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. Oh, Lord, me thou hast searched me. And known me. He what? And known me. Known me. It's past. Yes. That's right. Well, viewer, you may wonder, how long did God know you? How long did he know you? You better give me the first chapter, the first chapter of the book of, of Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Oh, you know where I'm going, huh? Oh, yes. Uh, you think it's something, huh? <laughs> Glory to God. Jeremiah chapter 1 and I verse 4. I want the world to understand. Amen. When did God know you? Right. Did he know you when you was conceived? Or did he know you after you came out the womb? Or did he know you before you even arrived? Or before you, your mother even met your father? That's right. Let's see how great this God knowledge is. Jeremiah chapter 1, we'll start at verse 4. All right. Then the word of the Lord came unto then me. Then the word of God came to me. Saying, before. Before. I formed thee in the before belly. Before I created you in your mother's belly. I knew thee. Glory to God. That's right. Before. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Viewers, that is why I'm telling all of you. Wonderful. Nobody of no position in the earth today will get around God. That's right. It doesn't matter what status you are able to make now. That's right. Your political status, Democrat, Republican, dictator, president, governor, mayor, king, queen, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The Lord our God has spoken. Before I formed thee in the belly. Before God made you in your mother's belly. Belly. I knew thee. That's right. Before. Are you listening? Before. Every mistake that you have made, are making, will make. That's right. Doesn't surprise God. No. Every failure have made, are making, will make. That's right. Doesn't surprise God. That's right. Every sin have made, are making, will make. Oh, yes. Doesn't surprise God. That's right. How sharp is the knowledge of our Lord? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before I formed thee. Before mm. your mother and father came together and he discharged his little soldiers. Mm. And they went marching to that egg to fertilize it. That's right. Your mother didn't even know your father. Before your mother and father was born. Yes. In fact, before he even made man. That's right. Let's go back further. 
before God said, let there be light. That's right. Glory be to God. That's right. The Holy Ghost said. Before I formed thee in the belly. Before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. Everything about you. Amen. God knows. That's right. So if you think that you're hiding from him. Hmm. You's a fool. That's a fool. He saw you running from him before you were born. That's right. He saw you light up that cigarette before your mother met your daddy. That's right. He saw you trying to get a sex change before he separate darkness from light. That's right. He saw the decisions of the governments of the world before it was a world to make a decision upon. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Before I formed thee in the Before belly. Before I formed thee. In the belly. That's why I tell you, viewers, mm -hmm. call me arrogant, call me whatever you like. God knew you before you knew yourself. In fact, you're still learning things about yourself. Oh, yes. God ain't learning nothing about you. That's right. Because he already know every minute detail. That's right. You that backslid. Yeah. He saw you. He saw you. He saw you when you repented, when you was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. He saw you when you received the Holy Ghost, which is his gift. That's right. And when he gave it to you, he knew you wasn't going to stay with him. That's right. He saw you when you left. Oh, yes. He saw you when you turned your back. Amen. He saw you when you broke in that house. Yeah. He saw you when you raped that woman. He saw you when you was marching in the prison before a prison was built. That's right. Are you listening? Before I formed thee in the belly. I want you to think of it. Think of it. Scratch your head now over this. Oh, yes. You know, scratch your head over this, professor. Mm -hmm. yeah. You that study theology That's and right. philosophy. Mm -hmm. You that think you're so deep and you're very shallow touching God. That's right. No one said, well, why the world is in the condition that it's in? That's right. God saw the condition of oh, the yeah. world. I saw the condition. No one said, well, Pastor Jenna, did Adam had to sin? Yes. Yeah. First yeah. Peter quickly now. Yeah. Amen. Let me show Amen. you how the Son of God was predestinated. That's right. I said, Adam, and I want everybody to hear me. I want to educate you. Mm -hmm. Adam had the sin. If yeah. God says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, mm -hmm. then he saw all the conditions of the world. That's right. Every drop of it. That's right. All of you that are here. Yeah. God saw everything you have done, is doing, going to do. He knew your birth date when you didn't have one. Yeah. You that are alive, yeah. God know the date of your departure. How you going to die? When you going to die? Where you going to die? The method that is used to take your life. That's right. God saw it. saw it. That's right. He know the ending of a thing when it haven't even began. Oh, yes. Are you getting what I'm telling? Oh, yeah. That's right. To prove that he knows those that are going to be saved, he said he knows them that are his. That are his. That's right. To prove he know that some that left him going to come back, he said I am obligated. That's right. To the backfire. That's what it means when it said, married. I'm married. married. You know, when you're married, there's an obligation. Oh, yeah. There's a commitment there. That's right. Oh, rich to God. That's right. So the one saved, always saved teaching is a lie. That's a lie. If one saved, always saved, the backsliding would never be written. That's right. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. Listen at this. In Come the book on, of Williams. First Peter, chapter one, and that we're at verse nineteen. I say Adam had to fall. Yeah. It just had to be. Had to be. If there's no fall of man, there is no uprise of man. That's right. After you read that in Peter, mm -hmm. I want the fifth chapter mm -hmm. of the book of Romans. Right. Wherefore, by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. That's right. And death passed upon all men, for they all had sinned. Nevertheless, death reigned. 
from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not come sinned. On, yeah. All right, come on, William, let's go to work. First Peter chapter 1, we'll start at verse 19. Uh -huh. But with the precious blood of Christ. With the precious blood of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. That's why Jesus came here. Amen. God, yeah, was manifested in the flesh. In the flesh. The flesh that God was manifested in, mm -hmm. the flesh was called Messiah. Messiah. The flesh was called apostle. Right. The flesh was called prophet. Yeah. The flesh was called lamb of God. That's right. The flesh was called sacrifice of God. Right. The flesh was called son of God. Yeah. The flesh was made by God, and then God got in the flesh, and that's when God took on flesh. That's right, that's right. He took on took flesh because in order to redeem us, he needed blood and spirit don't have no blood. That's right. So he went to David's house. That's right. And when he went to David's house, simultaneously, he was in the tribe of Judah. That's right. Because David came out of Judah's tribe. That's right. And Paul said it is quite evident that our Lord sprung out of Judah. Of Judah. Of when Judah. did he Bring out. When Mary womb opened up and the Son of Man came out, that was the springing out. That's right. Of the Lord. That's right. Listen. But with the precious blood of Christ. With the precious blood of Christ. Of Christ. As of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You see, the blood of the flesh of Christ had to be shed. That's right. As a lamb. As of a lamb. Without spot. And who verily. Who verily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let me show you. How he was predestinated. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. And this will show you what I mean. Adam had to fall. That's right. The survival of the son of God who verily. Was foreordained. He was predestinated. Before the foundation of the world. If the son of God. The sacrifice of sin. Was foreordained to come. That's right. Before the foundation of the world. Of the world. Then it was ordained for Adam to fall. That's right. The purpose of the arrival of the Son of God was to take away sin. Yeah. Why ordain his coming if there is no fall? That's right. That's right. That's right. Why would the Spirit ordain a sacrifice for us? That's right. If there is no reason to offer anything. Who verily was foreordained. By one man. That's right. Sin came into the Romans world. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Wherefore as by one man. I want to show you. You had two Adams. That's right. One got wrong and the other stayed right. That's right. One fell and the other came to pick us up from the fall. Go ahead, brother. Eh? That's right. Listen. Wherefore, as by one man, by one man, sin entered into the world. And that was as a result of Adam. By one man. Look at the damage that he caused. That's right. Give chapter and verse again. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. Look at the damage that he caused. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. Because of sin, planes getting hijacked. Mm. Because of sin, family cars are getting carjacked. That's right. Because of sin. That's right. Fathers are looking at their daughters the wrong way and raping them. Right. Because of the fall of Adam. By one man. Fathers is sodomizing their sons. That's right. Because of the fall of Adam. That's right. The governments of the world agree with same-sex marriages. That's right. The reason why they agree with it, because the fall of Adam's nature. Where right. Adam fell, that means man, mind, heart, body, soul collapsed. That's right. That's right. And man will not change until he be resurrected from Adam's dead behavior. That's right. That's why Jesus had to come and declare, I'm the resurrection. That's right. I'm the one that can pull you up. That's right. I'm the one. Hallelujah. Glory to God that can pull you up That's right. and stand you on your feet. That's right. Everybody needs the resurrection. That's right. Huh? Wherefore, as by one man. Wherefore? As by one man. By one man. Sin entered into the world. Sin came into the world. And death by sin. Death. Death by sin. By sin. Hold it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Death have a broad meaning. That's right. There's many forms of death. That's right. The first form of death was when God made man. That's right. 
Man had to become a living soul. That's right. But he made his form before he breathed in it. That's right. So when the form was there, what stayed was the form in before he became a living soul. That's right. His first stage was dead. That's right. And his first stage represent man's ending. Adam's beginning represent man's ending. That's right. Adam's first state of being, dead. That's yeah. right. God breathed at him, breath of life. Breath of life. He become a living soul. Right. Yeah. So now, here it is, God breathing to man. Yes. The breath of life. Breath of life. The breath of eternal life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost. That's right. That's right. The resurrect man from his dead sins. Yeah. Go ahead, man. And to keep him from killing himself, because sin kills the flesh. That's right. And destroys the flesh that it may be cast into an everlasting lake of fire. That's right. Bible says you're kept by the power of God. Power of God. So when God releases his breath, releases his spirit, don't you hear the Holy Ghost say? Right. He breathed on them That's right. and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Adam received natural breath. That's right. But when God breathed his spirit on the day of Pentecost, yeah. that was the breathing of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Whenever anybody received the Holy Ghost, you have been infilled with the breath of God. That's right. I'm not talking about your everyday breath. No. As a, uh, a gift of life. I'm talking about God. Yeah. God's spirit. Yeah. God's presence. That's right. Within your house. That's right. It's a gift. And when he had said this. Don't you know when you seek God for the Holy Ghost, you seek God for a gift? That's right. The word of God says what? In the book of St. John, chapter 20, and verse 22. What is it? And when he had said this, when he, said this he breathed on them. He what? Hallelujah. He breathed Hallelujah. on them. What did Jesus do? He breathed on them. I, I, I experienced that breath the other <laughs> night. Yeah, I believe last week, I believe I said it was my 45th. But it's not, it's my 48th. Yeah. I had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues 48 years. 48 years. Almost 50 years. My Lord. Almost 50 years ago, I came... <laughs> Before his presence. Amen. And dropped on my knees. Hallelujah. Got tired on my knees. I, hallelujah. I laid on the floor. Hallelujah. Got tired on the floor. I got back on my knees. Yeah. Got tired again. So then I sat in the chair. The position didn't matter. Right. I wanted to be resurrected. That's right. From the dead. That's right. So when in, at the appointed time, the great God of Abraham breathed on. Breathed. Off. Amen. Amen. And when he breathed on me, yeah. and there was so much heat until it ignited my tongue, you know. Go ahead, Hallelujah. brother. Hallelujah. Oh, take God. <laughs> and I was filled. Go ahead. With the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. And the Spirit of God gave out of it. And when he had said this, when he said this, he breathed on them. He breathed on them. And saith unto them, and said to them, Receive ye receive the Holy ye Ghost. Receive my Spirit. That's it. When they said, receive you the Holy Ghost, he said, receive you, that's receiving God's spirit. That's right. So here you had Jesus, son of God, predestinated, yeah. take away your sins. That's right. Adam had to fall. That's right. As a result of Adam's fall. That's right. Man been falling ever since. Wherefore is by one man sin entered into the world. Wherefore by one man sin came here. And death by sin. Death by sin. And so death passed upon Hallelujah all men. Hallelujah to God. Death passed upon how much? All men. Why? For that all have sinned. I told you, viewers. That's right. You that are here, you don't need nobody to put their nose up in the cloud. You sinned. You sinned. You hear what the Bible says about you? Wherefore as, wherefore as by one listen, man... Listen, 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 listen. Back in Romans 5 and verse 12. Wherefore... As by one man... As by one man... Sin entered into sin the world. Sin came here. And death by sin. And death. You got dead being buried. You got dead in sin. Then you got dead to sin. To sin. 
and death by sin. And what? And so death passed upon all men. What did all men do, William? For that all have sinned. All have sinned. You know, they get mad at me when I preach against sin over the air. They say, he preached like he ain't never done wrong. No, I don't preach like that. No. No, God make me preach because you are wrong. That's right. That's all that is. That's all that is. And you get a sinner who's spoiled. <laughs> That's right. And his or her sin That's right. don't like to be spanked. No. Whipped. Beat. That's right. Because of their wrong. That's right. You don't like that because you know your pastor ain't going to do it. No. By the time your pastor done with you, you don't even believe you're a sinner. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And so death passed upon all men, uh -huh. for that all have sinned. What's the result? For until the law, sin was in the world. And but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Yes. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Death, death reigned, reigned from Adam to Moses. Death reigned. Sin reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them. That had not sinned. After what? After the similitude of Adam's transgression. What was Adam? Who is the figure Wait. of... Adam was what? Who is the figure of who? Of him that was to come. The one that was to come would be Jesus. That's right. That's right. So Adam wore God's figure. And then when God was manifested in the flesh, he came in the same figure, same shape, same similitude, same fashion, same form. That's right. That the first Adam had. That's right. The difference was. One had to grow into a man. Yes. The other was made a man. That's Notice when he made Adam, he never said, let us make boy. Mm. Right. No, he Are didn't. you getting what I'm telling you? Go ahead, brother. Let us Go ahead. make man. Man. <laughs> That's right. Why let us make man? man? Because God want the world to know his intentions. That's right. For man at the beginning That's right. was to reflect God. Yeah. Be godly. Yeah. Live a holy, sanctified life. Right. Live by God's precepts, God's law. That's right. That's right. After Adam fell, After he the Lord told him, the day you eat thereof, I shall surely die. Surely die. Surely die. So I said, well, Pastor Jennings, that scripture is a contradiction in the Bible. No, because when Adam ate, he didn't die. That death was too deep for you. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. That's right. Hey, Amen. Adam died twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He died then spiritually, and he died at the age of 930 naturally. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Who will take God? That's right. So when he bit of the fruit that God told him not to, not do, to do, it killed him. That's right. He still helped God form. Yeah. He still helped God shape. He still helped God fashion. Yeah. But the moment he bit of the fruit, sin yes. came into his house. That's right. And sin contaminated his temple. That's right. And destroyed his likeness. Hmm. What do you mean? He made man in his likeness. In his That's beyond shape. Yeah. That means man expressed God's character. That's right. Man expressed God's attitude. That's right. Man expressed God's wisdom. That's right. So when man died, the character of God, the attitude of God, the emotions of God, all that was put to death put to through death. the act of disobedience. That's right. Showing the world. It doesn't matter if you're walking with God today. That's if right. you venture after sin, you are killing your temple. Yeah. You are killing Killing your house and you are dying. That's right. A slow death. A slow death. Wherein Adam wasn't dying. No. He just died. He died. That's right. Come on, Jay. That's right. Come on. In the book of That's Second, the difference. That's right. That's the difference. Someone said, well, how is it we're dying? He just died. Yeah. You're dying, dying because now you're in grace. Right. <laughs> Mercy now. The mercy now is different then. That's right. Oh, yes. yeah? That's right. <laughs> the mercy now, you're dying. Yes. That's what the Bible said. You're killed all, all the day long. long. All the day long. Yes. That didn't apply to Adam. No. God's law, the day. That's right. The day you disobey me. Yes. The day you do it. Yes. The moment you do it, moment. you shall surely die. Surely die. Surely die. Yes, Adam, yes, 
country. Assassinated himself. Yes, he did. Adam disobedient yeah. will self-murder. Oh, thou Adam. Listen. In the book of 2nd Esther, chapter 7 and verse 48. Oh. Oh, thou Adam. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thou Adam. What hast thou done? All right, well. Amen. All right. Adam. Amen. What did you do? What hast thou done? What hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned. It was you mm. that sinned. Thou art not fallen alone. Not only did you sin, Amen. but you blamed someone else. That's yeah. right. But the book said it was you. For though it In was the New Testament, I the Old Testament, the Old he Testament. said, the woman you gave me. That's right. Pass the buck. That's right. But God said, for though it, chapter verse again. Second Esther chapter 7 and I'm at verse 48. What is it? Oh thou Adam. Oh thou Adam. What hast thou done? What did you do? For though it was thou it that was sinned. thou that sinned. Thou art not fallen alone. You didn't fall by yourself. But we all that come of thee. Amen. Everybody born as a result of Adam's failure. Yeah. You're born a fallen child. That's right. That's right. So this is why the new birth is necessary. Oh, yes. To slow the momentum of mm. your fall. Mm. Preach it, In other words, the new birth Preach and the way of holiness is God's way of putting brakes <laughs> upon you. That's right. So you can stop falling. That's right. You won't stop overnight. No. That's why you have to constantly come where the truth of the gospel is because sometimes you have fall so rapidly your brake pads need to be replaced. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. And in the church, you got to have spiritual mechanics. Oh, yes. Being that naturally every car is different. So yes. all brake pads is not the same. That's right. Some people pace of falling yeah. is slower than others. Oh, yes. Faster than others. Yeah. I don't care how long it takes for that tree to go down. Yeah. Oh, yes. Eventually, it's going to snap. That's right. The truth of the gospel is a brace. Oh, yes. To put around mind, soul, body, and spirit. Yeah. The difference is God don't force his braces upon you. That's right. You, you know how you drive your car? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. To the shop. Yeah. Need an oil change. Yes, Need brakes pads. Oh, yeah. And the brakes tell you because you can hear it squeaking. <laughs> That's right. You may not know how bad they are. Yeah. So the mechanics hoist the car up. And let you know, hey, look, your past is gone. You need to replace your rotors now. Yeah. 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 Why? You, you, you really wore down. Yeah. Wore down. You know you need them. <laughs> That's right. But you really wore them down. That's right. See, you know you need to be in God's shop. Oh, yes. But a lot of us don't know how much wear and tear or damage we have done to our soul. That's true. That's true. So just let the mechanic take your car to that computer yeah. so the computer can give the proper testimony of the condition of the car. Yeah. You have to come the way of scripture. That's right. Because the scripture always gives accurate, accurate testimony oh, yeah. of your spiritual state of being. And just like That's right. when they tell you what that bill going to cost and you're like, oh, what? <laughs> That's right. You don't want to accept that. You're the same way about your own self. That's true. You don't want to accept how messed up you are. Messed up you, are. you don't want to accept how weak you are. Right. You don't want to accept how dirty you are. Yeah. You fail to realize if you accept the way you are, then and only then improvement can be applied. That's right. That's right. Forget about how bad it sounds oh, yes. if you are in that condition. Oh, yeah. The mechanic is here to fix it. That's right. Get rid of your pride. That's right. 
Get rid of your self-righteousness. That's right. Get rid of your arrogance. That's right. The scriptures, to every car, yeah. you get a manual. Yeah. To every Hallelujah. Per, to every person, this is your manual. That's right. It shows you how to drive. Yeah. How to run. Oh, yeah. What pace to run. Oh, yeah. What pace you're not running. Not running. The problem with us, just like in the natural, we take our manual and throw it in the glove compartment, never look at it. Yeah. We take the manual of life. Oh, yes. The book of scriptures. That's right. Push it aside yeah. and never look at it because we don't want to see our real self in here. That's right. And about the time many of us see our real self, we have been totally demolished. Oh, yes. And now it takes years yes. of repair. That's right. Psalms 108 and that verse. Your down. arrogance yeah. is your downfall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Your disobedience yeah. is your downfall. That's right. Are you listening? Psalms 108 and at verse 1. Oh God. Huh, give chapter and verse again. Psalms 108 and I'm at verse 1. Yes. Oh God. Oh God. My heart, my is, heart is fixed. It's fixed. I will sing and give praise. I will sing and give praise. Even with my glory. Even with my glory. So this is what's needed. Your heart needs to get fixed. Get fixed. That's right. That's right. Well, I don't, I, but if I do this, they're going to look at me. Who? Right. You're more concerned about him and her and not he. Yeah. Be grateful oh, yes. that God set up the church, which is the garage That's right. for broken sinks. Mm. That's and right. That's right. Broken sinks. Broken. Some of you are jalopies. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Some of you. Go ahead. Backfires. Amen. Some of you, your timing chain is off. Yeah. And some of you, your starter is broke. That's and this right. is why you can't start up to get right with God because it's broke. That's you need right. a new ignition there. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Some of you need an oil chain. Oh, yes. Because there's so much smoke and so much chaos as a result of you being a fool. That's right. Smoke advertised that there's a problem in that engine. Problem. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. A lot of time your actions advertise that you have failed or you are falling away from God. That's right. The dirtier your oil is, the more smoke comes from your exhaust. Yeah. The longer you stay in your madness. Oh, yeah the more madness you will manifest. In the book of Hosea, chapter 10 and verse 2. Are you listening? Amen. The word of God says what? Hosea, chapter 10, and I'm at verse 2. What is it? Their heart is divided. Their heart is not together. Now shall they be found faulty. Now they shall be found faulty. So when your heart is divided, yeah. in order for you to get good results from God, God wants a unified heart. That's right. That's why the scriptures here is to fix your heart repaired. You're broken. That's right. A lot of time we, you know, you get a car, got about six or eight cylinders. Back in the 30s and 40s and 50s, it was common to get a car that had 12 cylinders. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, 12 cylinders to, 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 to carry all that iron <laughs> yeah. and all that steel. Oh, yeah. I mean, 12 cylinders. Yeah. Some of us. Four cylinders and still backfiring. Still backfiring. Some of us is like a horse and buggy and still backfiring. That's right. Because we can have someone that have the aptitude to help, but our arrogance, our pride oh, yeah. get in the way. Oh, yeah. And as long as you allow your natural car to go without being serviced, uh -huh the worse the damage going to get and the more money it going to cost you to fix it. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. The longer it takes, you allow yourself to stand in your own way. That's right. And come and allow the word of God to fix you, the worse you're going to get. That's true. And the price of your condition, your condition. is going to excel. Oh, yes. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Go ahead, man. Let's go back to the foundation of everything now. Back in Psalms 139 and verse 1. Follow me. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. <laughs> Amen. We got all that from that statement. All that from that. <laughs> oh, Lord. Thou hast searched me. 
Thou hast searched me and known me. Amen. God know you. God know you. Oh, yes. The very thoughts that just ran through your mind just now. Mm. <laughs> God saw them. Oh, yes. So why would you lie to your own self about yourself? That's right. You know, sometimes I ask, when people come talk to me, I ask them, are you such and such and such a thing? Oh, no, Pastor Jennings. And I ask it very straight, mm -hmm. right. right in their face. That's right. I disturb their peace. Yes. That's right. Now, I'm asking them about the way I already know they are. Uh -huh. But I'm asking them to see do they have the humility to acknowledge what they know themselves. That's right. And, but because it sounds so ugly, so distasteful, so unholy. Yeah. Even though if they know the truth is true, they'd rather say, no, I'm not like that. But in their heart, they say, wow, he hit it right on the nail. <laughs> That's right. Because they think I'm going to judge him, which I'm not. That's right. And yet I got Bible authority to. Yeah. Because I can judge you with the book. That's right. But I won't. I'm going to preach to you with the book. Wonderful. And then encourage you to judge yourselves. Yes. Right. For we take God that ye be not judged. Amen. Uh -huh. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. I don't even look down upon a person in their wrong. I don't do it. Yeah. And I deal with thousands of people. That's right. Not one That's right. do I look down upon in their wrong. I just don't do it. Nice. Why? Because everybody's struggle differs from another. That's right. And I got Bible wisdom to understand that. Yeah. For some, they can overcome that thing like that and bounce back. Yeah. For others, they can't overcome it so fast. In fact, they're being buried in it. Mm. And if they see you being buried in something and you're too mental and emotional and spiritual incompetent yeah. to dig your way out that dirt, <laughs> swallow your pride. That's right. And ask for help or else die a fool. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. The church yes, is the mechanic shop oh, yeah. for God's people. Oh, yes. Listen. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched oh, me. Oh, Lord, thou hast examined me. And known me. Thou hast investigated me, and you know everything about me. You knew me before I came into the knowledge of the truth. You knew me before my mother and father came together. Everything, I want, I want everybody to get that. Let it sink in your hard head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't ask me later on, Pastor Jenner, do you think God know this about me? Don't insult me with the question. That's right. Don't even ask me later on because I won't answer you. That's right. I'm just going to give you a look. Yeah. That's right. And you know what that look means. <laughs> there used to be a comedian in the 50 called Jack Benny. That's right. And Jack Benny had a look. The Jack Benny look was... Yeah. Notice that look, viewer. That's right. You ain't got to ask, is that wrong? Is that wrong? Is that wrong? Just go to the Bible. Go to the Bible. And when your ways is not pleasing God, you know it's wrong. That's right. That's right. The Lord says, Oh Lord, thou hast searched me. The prophet said, Oh Lord, thou hast investigated me. And known you me. You know me. Thou knowest my down city. Uh oh. You know my, my down setting, setting and my uprising. Hold it. Hmm. Everybody all right? Amen. Let's detail that and take you out of your mental box of down setting, down setting. sitting down, and your uprising, standing up. That's right. Knowing your down setting, down setting. meaning he has perfect knowledge of all failures of the human race. Yeah. Uprising, Uprising, he have perfect knowledge how the same people, the human family, yes. rise up or come out of yeah. the dirt that they're in. That's right. So you find yourself many times, and I'm pretty sure many of you can bear witness, sitting down, rising up, yes. and then sitting back down in the same thing. Yeah. That's right. And then praying for God to stand you up or pull you out of the same thing. That's so when you find yourself in and out, in and out of the same thing, that thing become a struggle. Yeah. It's a struggle. Oh, yes. So I so said, well, Pastor Dennis, I don't physically, you know, I'm not in and out of nothing physically, so I'm all right. If you're in and out mentally, right. let's, let's bring it home now. That's right. 
yourself. You're in and out mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. You're in a stage of instability. Because when you're stable, ice, an uh, ice sickle in zero weather mm -hmm. is a stable ice sickle. Yeah. It become unstable when the climate change. That's right. What happened? It starts to get weak, and the sign of its weakness is the dripping. That's right. And the longer it drip, drip, it gets smaller. Oh yeah. yeah. Until it detach itself and fall. Oh, That's yes. True. Examine yourself and see where you're weak at. That's right. Right. Now, you can't tell everybody where you're weak at. No way. No, don't be that big of a fool. No. You can't even share your weakness to everyone. That's true. No way. Because some don't even want to acknowledge it to themselves. That's right. But you can't share your weakness with everybody. No. You have to examine yourself. Yeah. Some people so quick to run to me. Do you see where I'm weak at? Do you see where you're weak at? Amen. Well, I think it ain't no thank nothing. Do you know your shoe is untied? That's right. Examine yourself. What? Examine yourselves. In the second, Holy Ghost says. In 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. Investigate yourself. Examine yourselves. Investigate yourself. Look your own self over. Whether ye be in the faith. Whether you are in what God believes. Prove your own prove self. Prove to yourself. Prove it to yourself. That's right. That's right. Stop trying to prove everything to everybody else. That's right. The book says prove. Prove your own self. Your own self. Know ye not your own selves. What? Know ye not your own self. Know ye not your own self. How that Jesus Christ is in you. He's in you. Except you be reprobate. Except you be reprobate, meaning except he gave you up. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Huh, I thank God for that. <laughs> Amen. Paul said, I trust that you should know. He ain't no reprobate. What do you mean? God ain't give him up or give him over. That's right. Uh -huh. Now I pray to God. I pray to God. That ye do no evil. Mm. Mm. Prayer yes. is of a necessity. Amen. Right. To slow down and eventually stop. The desire for evil. That's right. No one said, well, a saint don't think evil. And then they bring the scripture says, the Holy Ghost think of no evil. The Holy Ghost is not the saint. No. The Holy Ghost is the spirit that resides in the saint. That's right. So that scripture don't apply there. Oh, no. Don't tell me a saint don't think evil. I give you a Bible where even the apostles, they acknowledge what was in them. Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints. Job 15, 15, God says. Job 15, 15, behold. God put no trust. God ain't got no confidence. In his saints. Why? Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. After he saw heaven get messed up as a result of Adam, and that third of angels turned their back on him, Amen. God knew that all of his creation was in trouble. That's right. That's true. He That's knew true. it. He That's knew right. after, I, after I make man and put a law on the earth for that man to follow me, that man going to struggle, struggle trying to do what I say. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. I ain't going to put no trust in that man. No I ain't going to trust. trust his flesh. No. He'll pray one day and smoke the next. <laughs> That's right. That's right. God let him know I ain't going to trust his flesh. He'll no be trust. praying to me, Lord, <laughs> help me. And by that evening... No trust in the saints. And it's not his wife in his arms either. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Behold, he putteth no trust. No trust. No trust. In his saints. No trust. I'm pulling back the curtains. <laughs> Amen. Behind curtain number one, there's a jalopy there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost said. Behold, he putteth no trust. They don't need for no one to put themselves on a pinnacle. No. Just come on back down to the earth. I can God, you listen, I can respect a person who's brutally wrong, but honest about that wrong. Yeah. I respect him or her. Oh, yeah. Than a self-righteous, high-minded, arrogant heathen. That's right. Who put themselves where because one thing about God. You can go ahead and put yourself wherever you like. God have a way of allowing an experience to come in your life that'll pull you back in check. Yes, it will. 
See, can you talk your way out of that speaking in tongues? <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Behold, he putteth no trust. He put no trust in his saints. In his saints. Yea, the heavens, the heavens are not are clean dirty in in his yes. sight. That's true. Mm. Heaven is unclean in his sight. Angels never had to strive to be holy. No. They was made holy from the day they were created. That's right. But any time angels betrayed God, yeah. and then God just indicted heaven oh, yeah. and saw how heaven was unclean. Unclean. This goes back to contradict what you preachers been teaching you folks out there yeah. that God don't dwell in no unclean temple. Yeah. Really? Really. Heaven was unclean and God still was there. Yes, he was. You didn't think of that, did you, preachers? That's right. It ain't no Bible that says God don't dwell in no unclean temple. There ain't no Bible that ever said that. No. Heaven was unclean and God was right there. Right there. Notice, God didn't leave. That's right. He got rid of the unclean. Right. God didn't leave. No. When you receive the Holy Ghost and God come in you, you ain't clean. Not clean. When God came in you, no. if you was clean, what you need God for? That's right. You need God to come in you to clean you up. That's right. You ain't clean already, you liar. That's a lie. God come where the darkness is. That's right. God come where sin is. That's right. Thank God he come until he declared in the scriptures, he said that I will dwell in the thick darkness. Then spake Solomon. Give chapter and verse. In 1 Kings chapter 8 and at verse 12. Hear this, viewers. Then spake Solomon. I want this to be good. Because I know you all was misled. Yeah. God don't do well in no unclean temple. Use a liar. <laughs> Use a, lie. a liar. Use a liar. That's right. Heaven got unclean and God dwell right there. That's right. In heaven. That's right. Clean and unclean and was there. That's right. It's just a clean overpowered the unclean. Yeah. And beat up the unclean. <laughs> and threw the unclean out. That's right. And the unclean came to the earth. Right. And now the earth is in chaos. That's right. That's true. That's right. Hear this now. First Kings chapter 8 and at verse 12. Yeah. Then spake Solomon. Mm -hmm. The Lord said. The Lord said. That he would dwell in thick darkness. Brother, there is no darkness under the sun thicker than the state of sin of a man and a woman. Oh, yes. So God come in the center. That's right. You out there, and many of you in here. Oh, yes. God come in you. That's right. Why? You're dirty. That's right. And you can't clean yourself. You're not able. No. Jesus said you're clean through the word. That's right. That I speak that I unto, spoke you. unto you. Then he said, seeing you have purified your souls, in obeying the truth, Amen. telling you how to get clean. That's it. But on your own, you can't clean yourself. No way. Because the dirt feel too good. That's right. You know the way you are as a child? Many children ain't want to get no bath. No. Didn't mind playing in dirt, though. Mm -hmm. That's true. Didn't mind playing in dirt, man. I mean, all in the mud. You know, sometimes the child don't walk around the mud, jump right in it. <laughs> That's right. And be looking at you grinning while they jumping. That's right. That's right. But then mother or father take the clothes off. Child fight. I don't want no bath. That's Why? Right. The dirt is appealing to the child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the dirt is appealing to the child all on the face, all on the hand. That's I remember right. when I was a little kid, five years old and six years old, I didn't mind playing out there in the street. That's when a neighborhood, it was a community. Yeah. We played marbles. We played uh, two kinds of basketball. Yeah. Basketball with the hoop and basketball with the milk soda cream. Right. And, Amen. And, and the trash can. Too, and with the trash can, yes. The trash can. That's called hood basketball. <laughs> that's, right, that's right. Yeah, when you didn't have hoops, what we did, we got a crate, open up the bottom, right. and put it up on somebody's garage or door, or we get a trash can. Knock out the bottle and we play basketball that way. That's right. And we be slamming and everything. Oh, yes. Huh? Amen. That's called hood basketball. Football. Football. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Then we'll play half ball, but we got dirty. Oh, yeah. Dirty. Oh, yeah. But brother, when it was time to come in, my father, all right, Gene, come on in. Yeah. I, and it's time to get your bath. Then my father had them hands that had calluses. Yeah. Mm hmm. 
And uh, I remember when I first said, Daddy, let me wash myself. He said, boy, you don't know what you're doing. He said, you got to be clean. You got the scrub. I said, Daddy, let me wash myself. Right. He said, all right. He said, but I'll be back right. to check on you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, a parent, when they wash you, they're going to scrub you. Yeah. A child just going to fool around mm -hmm. and then think they're clean. Yeah. So my father came back. I said, I'm done. He said, you're done. He looked at the water. He said, why the water is clear? That's right. <laughs> Come on. He said, the water is clear and you wasn't in there long enough. Amen. He said, give me the rag. Yes. Give me the rag. And give me the soap. Amen. See, we didn't, I wasn't raised taking these commercial baths. Right. Where, you know, you, see, you just see a bar of Dove rubbing on you. <laughs> That's right. No rag, no washcloth. You know, folks today, they call them face cloth or wash cloth. We call them rags. <laughs> and I still tell my, I, I, I say to my wife, look, where's my rag? <laughs> why, hey, why? Rag, wash cloth, I just want to get the job done. That's it. So my father get the rag and brother here lather that thing up. Hold me with one hand. <laughs> and scrub me till I feel like I was in the wash machine with the other. Because when I said I'd done it, he took that callous, filled thumb mm. <laughs> and went against the grain of my elbow. Amen. And that, rolled, that dirt rolled up. Amen. He said, you didn't do nothing. Amen. Viewers, <laughs> that's the way I am with the Bible. <laughs> that's right. You see you in some church jumping and shouting, oh, <laughs> right. yelling like Kermit the Frog. Oh, That's right. Oh. That's jumping around and think you wash think in you the wash. blood. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Oh, Hallelujah. Thank you all clean all and clean. saved. That's right. We come along with the Bible yeah. and rub that scripture against your soul. Oh, yeah. And all that sin rolled up. That's right. And we come back with Bible and tell you, you got to do your first works first over. First work over. Come on back. That's yeah. right. That bowling head and raise your hands, you ain't clean. No. Praying a sinner's prayer, you ain't clean. No. Baptized Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, you're not clean. You're not clean. Being sprinkled in the Catholic Church, you're not clean. That's right. Come on back to the roughness and the toughness of God's word That's and right. get clean the right way. That's right. In the book of Job, chapter 20. Glory to God. Amen. Keep chapter and verse. Come on, William. Job chapter 20 and we're at verse 11. What is it? His bones are full of the sin of his youth. His bones Amen. are full of the sin of his youth. Of the sin of his youth. Which shall lie down with him in the dust. Which shall lie down with him in the dust. The wickedness be sweet. The wickedness. Be sweet in his mouth. Yeah. Amen. How many here enjoy wickedness sometime? Raise your hand. Amen. Come on now, you need to be ashamed right. about it. Oh, yeah. Come on, raise your hands up. Amen. That's right, oh yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you don't get them up, remember, before I formed thee. In the belly I knew thee. I knew you. That's right. You can't hide. That's right. Can't hide at all. Can't hide. What did he say, William? The wickedness be sweet in his mouth. The wickedness be sweet in his mouth. Though he hide it. Though. <laughs> Amen. That's what we do. What he do? Though he hide it. He hide it. Under his tongue. Under his tongue. Though he spare it. Though he spare it. And forsake it not. And forsake it not. But keep it still within his mouth. Keep it still mouth. within his mouth. Yet his meat in his bowels his is meat turned. and his bowels are turned. It is the gall of asp it within him. It is the gall of asp within him. He hath swallowed down riches. He hath swallowed down wealth. And she shall vomit them up again. Everything that's in, God going to bring it out of you. Yes, he will. You might as well come along and change your ways. I admit a lot of it is hard. Sure it is. That's right. But uh, a strong person or a person who's not intimidated by change yeah. will make an effort. Don't hype yourself up. That's right. Because when you hype yourself, you hurt yourself. Oh, yeah. Remember that. Oh, yes. Take that quote. When you hype yourself, you hurt yourself because you know what you do? You put yourself on a pinnacle where God didn't put you. That's right. And Jesus said this. He that exalts himself 
shall be abased. Shall be abased. Don't put yourself nowhere where God didn't put you. No. All right, go back to the foundation, William, so I can knock off. I, Come was, on, in the, son. I was originally in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 1. All right, finish that up and go back to where we originally were. A wise judge will instruct his people. A wise judge. Amen. Will give the people instructions. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Yes. Back in Psalms 139 and verse 1. What else? Oh, Lord, thou hast searched thou me. Thou hast searched me. And known me. Known me. Thou knowest my down You know my down And my uprising. My uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Wait a minute. Amen. You have thoughts now you didn't have when you was 15. Oh, yeah. You have thoughts now you didn't have when you were 18. You have yeah. thoughts now you didn't have when you were 5. That's right. So the thoughts you have now were far off. That's right. You just got old enough and you caught up with the thought and the thought caught up with you. <laughs> Amen. And there are thoughts that you don't have now that you will have at 35. Yeah. And when you get 35, there are thoughts waiting on you at 40. Right. By the time you're 40, there are some thoughts waiting on you when you're 41. Mm. And see how quiet it is? Amen. Somebody say, yeah, Pastor Jenner, because I'm dealing with all those thoughts now. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. That's Come right. on. Thou understandest my thought afar of off. And? Thou compassest my path and yes. my lying down. And? and art acquainted with all my ways. He had to get acquainted. And art acquainted with all my ways. So there's things about you, you're still learning. Yeah. And what brings about self-knowledge is the broadness of experience. That's right. Experience introduce you to you. Yeah. That's right. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah. Experience introduces you to you. It is easy to say, I will never do this, I will never do that, I will never do the other. It's easy to say that without that experience. That experience. And you may dodge that ball that time. Yeah. That don't mean you're going to dodge it the next time. That's right. Remember coming up, we played dodgeball? Yeah. Oh, man, sometimes we hate when a certain person was throwing the ball. Yeah. Because, man, they throw that thing strong and leave a bruise on your arm or a bruise <laughs> right. on your back. But when we played dodge a ball, brother, we was out to get you. That's right. I mean, we all be out there making sure it get hit. And, brother, you get the right person. Right person. Oh, yeah. That ball hits you and you try to jump and it hits your legs and you fall right on your face. That's right. That's the way many of us are about our own self. We try to dodge yeah. the reality of ourselves. That's right. Please, the scriptures is a mirror. You don't like what you see all the time. No. But the Holy Ghost says, God says, what about our ways? Thou compassest my path and my lying down. And, and art acquainted with all God my ways. God is acquainted. With all my ways. Balance that out back with Jeremiah chapter 1. Back in Jeremiah chapter 1. Follow me. Jeremiah 1 and verse 4. Listen at this. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, and said what? Before I formed thee in the belly. You get this, viewers, and you that are here. Amen. God said before. I formed thee in the belly. Before I made you in the belly. I knew thee. And what did the prophet David say? And thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. Here, chapter and verse there. Uh, that was Psalms 139 and at verse 3. The prophet said what? He is acquainted with how much? And art acquainted with all my ways. And Jeremiah said, how long did he know me? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before. Right. <laughs> now, viewers, you might as well get your fool self together. Yeah. And face the fact you're nothing but a piece of miserable dust. That's miserable. True. You might as well repent of your sins. You can act like a fool and keep going to church on Saturday or Sunday thinking you're doing God a favor. You ain't doing nothing for oh, God. No. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Church don't do nothing for God. You got to do it for you. No. Yeah. Amen. God set up this church for you. That's, That's right. right. And you might as well make it up in your mind and get ready to do what he said, how he said. He said it. You only got a short time to be out there. It won't be for long. Yeah. Your body will go cold and somebody will call the ambulance and you will be pronounced dead in your sins. That's right. That's God right. will stop your heart. Yeah. Your blood will stop running warm in your veins. Oh, yes. God don't even care if your eyes is open. He'll let your eyes stay open and then take your spirit. Our life is short and tedious. What? In the book of the wisdom of Solomon. You better hear this. In the Hard. Hey, you know, they, uh, mm -hmm. and moreover, they say over the air, he's the most arrogant man I ever heard. You can call me whatever you like. That don't phase me no more than a duck can smoke a pipe. <laughs> That's right. And wear a dinner jacket. 
and go out on a date with the chicken. Amen. And they both order beef stew. That don't move me. No. Your problem is you ain't never been told God's word right in your face. That's right. That's why you go to these churches where many celebrities join so you can say, oh, this celebrity is there, that celebrity is there, that celebrity. That don't mean nothing to God. <laughs> no. This is what God Almighty is calling for here. In the book of the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 1. What did he say? Our life is short and tedious. Our life is short. Doesn't matter how much money you got. No. Doesn't matter how much money you have. Doesn't matter the size, house, how many cars. No. Mm -hmm. Does the Lord still speak here? Our life is short and tedious. Your life is short, viewers. Amen. Yeah. Tedious. And in the death of a man, there is in no the remedy. In the death of a man. Of a man. There is no remedy. There's what? There is no remedy. No cure. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. I was say, wait a minute, Pastor Jenny, you see that? You see that, Pastor Jenny? After contradicting, because Jesus rose. Right. But the Bible said there was no man. Neither was there any man known to have returned that from the grave. That which came back the third day was a glorified body. That was no natural man. That's right. That was a spiritual body. That's right. Was, what about the, the saints that died after the resurrection? The Bible says some of the bodies. Some of them. Of the saints which slept arose. That's right. But they dead again now. Oh, yes. That's right. Are you listening? That's oh, right. Yes. So uh, I remember years ago, I think it was in the 80s or 90s or 70s, it came over the news how scientists was making some type of chamber. And wealthy people was buying up the chambers. And uh, where well, they can put them in the chamber and then bring them back 50, 60, 70 years later. You stupid scientist. That's stupid. Right. That's right. Scientist falsely so called. The falsely. Bible says that. Get that quickly. Yes, on my way. You're stupid, so you're stupid scientist. That's you're so right. dumb. You're so hell deserving. I see why the Bible says he turned the wisdom of the wise backward. Backward. And make their knowledge foolish. Let's see how dumb these scientists are. I believe in the book of Timothy, is it? First Timothy chapter 6 and we're at verse 20. That's what? Oh, Timothy. Keep, oh, Timothy. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. Keep that which I trust you with. Avoiding Avoid profane. Profane. And vain babblings. Vain babbling. And opposition of science. Of science. Falsely. Falsely. So-called. So-called. Which some profess. Which some profess. Have error. have error. Concerning the faith. Concerning what God believed. Grace be with thee. Amen. Give chapter and verse again. First Timothy chapter 6 verses 20 and 21. So I don't believe everything that scientists said. No they way. They can put you in a capsule all they want. <laughs> Jesus said I'm the resurrection. Wonderful. Not That's no right. scientists. Not no oh, scientists. Life and death is in the hands of God. Deuteronomy quickly. Yeah. Quickly now. Yeah. I said life and death. That's right. Is in the hands of God. That's right. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 32. 32 if you will. And verse 39. God says. See now that I. God talks. See now that I, see now that I, even I, even am, I, am He. What? And there is no God with me. Tell the world what God say He do. I kill. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Eh? Amen. I want you scientists to get this. That's right. You can go get in the big old empty oil tank all you want, and <laughs> let right. some crack pot fill it with hot ice That's and right. make a milkshake out of it. That's right. That's right. Ain't no sci the scientist that put you in there. He gonna die. He gonna die. That's true. The scientist that invented that trash. He gonna die. That's right. If he ain't dead already. Amen. They can have all the tubes and run all the liquid. Put peach soda in there, orange soda, iced tea, and amen. Oh, the little man. drop of milk, and they can put all of it they want. They can get a shaman to run around there. That's, um, that's, that's right. Um, 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 Burn some sage. That's right. <laughs> the Lord said, I kill. That's why you don't like me out there, because we they crush it. They don't, they don't like we you. We crush it. You, you dumb, ignorant, hell-bound, stupid right. scientists. That's right. You dumb things. Amen. You think you're the resurrection? Mm. I remember years ago when Mr. Jackson, Michael Jackson was living, Michael Jackson. and they put him in a tank. Put him in a, a clear tank that was made like a casket. They said they made it so... So if you're about to die, they'll put you in this tank. And when you do die, your soul will be trapped in the tank. 
Mm -hmm. In other words, when your soul come out, it'll be trapped behind glass. Right. In the book of Ecclesiastes. You stupid thing. Stupid. You're so stupid. You're That's so right. ignorant. You know the devil make you a fool. That's right. What you say it sounds stupid. Yeah. Did you hear the Bible talking? Now in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8 and verse 8. That's what? There is no man that hath power there over the There is no spirit. man. I believe that. Because I believe that. God said it. That's right. There is no man that hath power over the spirit. To retain the spirit. To retain the spirit. Neither hath he power in the day of death. What? And there is no discharge in that war. But they made a capsule, say it's going to trap you. There is no here, man. Here, here, And here comes Jesus after he rose. Here come. The door was closed. That's right. And he didn't knock. That's right. And he just appeared right in there. That's right. Not even the grave can hold him. Amen. They couldn't trap him. No. Until he said, thou shalt not leave my soul in hell. That's right. You ain't going to keep it there. No. That's right. And you infidels make tubes and... Large trash cans. <laughs> they put an old sinner in there who was wealthy and bring him back 2,055, you idiot. That's an idiot. You hot ice fool. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I know you don't like what I say. And look at me. I don't care if you don't. <laughs> God say, I wound. I kill. I kill. And I make alive. I make alive. I wound. I wound. And I heal. I heal. Neither is there any. Wait a minute. Now, after he killed you, he testified. He said, neither is there any. That can deliver out of my hand. When I kill you, nobody can bring you back. That's right. That's right. Amen. Any. Why? Because I'm the resurrection. That's right. Then he said, I'm the life. I'm the life. Then he said, the body without the spirit is dead. Is dead. Is dead. <laughs> you breathe by God permission, stiff neck. That's you right. breathe by God permission. You out there vaping and smoking and partying. That's right. You breathe by God permission. That's right. Your celebrity friends, they're dying one by one. Oh, yeah. They're fine. You're finding them in their apartment, in their mansion, and their mansion sitting in a big uh, 1424 carat gold pimp chair. That's right. Sitting there dead with a pina yeah. colada in his hand. That's right. Pina colada on, sandals on. The women around there are still twerking. He dead. He, amen. <laughs> amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They still around there twerking like shaking bacon. I help. That's, <laughs> that's right. Dead. Dead. And all your Emmy Awards and Grammy Awards and your little star down there in California that's on the ground. Yeah. Look at the year that some of them stars was made. Oh, yeah. Them actors and actresses are dead. Oh, yes. Yeah. Huh? That's right. Oh, yeah. Look at all them stars from the 20s and 30s and silent movie era. <laughs> that's dead. Right. Dead. Dead. Oh, many of them was on the front of Time magazine and Amen, and uh, y'all dating the president and all that stuff. Oh, dead. Dead. Some of them marry king. Some of them marry prince. Dead. dead. That's right. Only thing that's left behind is a street named after them. That's right. A little boulevard named after them. Yeah. That's all it is. And our name shall be forgotten in time. Do you hear what it says? In the book of the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 4. It says what? And our name shall be forgotten. Our name. Our name. Shall be forgotten in time. You better hear this last day message, viewer. That's right. Get mad at me much as you please. Your anger Preaching won't brother. stop the message. No. When the Lord comes, you're going to remember that it's upon him one something man that die after death judgment, and you better judge yourself now to escape the judgment that's coming. That's right. The Holy Ghost said. And our name shall be forgotten in time. Our name <laughs> eventually will not be remembered. And no man shall have our works in remembrance. <laughs> no man. No man. Amen. No man. No man. Right. Some of you watching now, your fathers, your parents, your relatives was big movie stars. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this generation never heard of them. Yeah. Right. That's right. right. That's true. Name was forgotten. Forgotten. Amen. Your grandmama got old photo albums of Don Juan. <laughs> That's right. Folks don't know who Don Juan was. That's true. Huh? That's right. That's right. Your grandfather used to be the stage handler and used to one of the grip men. 
Yeah. When there was no sound on the movie stage. Mm -hmm. And he probably was there looking at every shoot that took place oh. with Rudolph Valentino. <laughs> That's right. Only the Rudolph these folks know about is some fool nose reindeer. That's right. Had a very hellbound nose. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> what? And our name shall be forgotten in time. You that don't like Pastor Jennings, this was going to happen to your name. That's shall right. be forgotten in time. You that fight God, this was going to happen to your name. Our name shall be forgotten in time. You that says the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ is not right, this was going to happen to your name. Our name shall be forgotten in time. You false prophet that all day women to be bishops and elders and deacons and all of that, this was going to happen to your bishop. Our name shall be forgotten in time. What's going to happen to the church organization? Our name shall be forgotten in What's time. What's going to happen to the religion of men? Shall be forgotten in time. What's going to happen to that woman that men slob over now because she She's on Time Magazine. They rush to every store to buy Playboy and Hustle and Penthouse so they can look at her in the centerfold and look. <laughs> Shall be forgotten in time. Now the, now the page that you looked at is all faded that's and it's right. stuck together to another page. That's right. And that woman, that's that centerfold. She dead now. Oh, oh yeah. That's right. A I AIDS or syphilis. Yeah. Or gonorrhea. Oh, yeah. Don ate her up. That's right. What? Our name shall be forgotten in time. You know, the Lord know how to bring you down to the lowest common denominator. Oh, yes. Now, you go to church, hypocrite. That's right. Go to church, hypocrite. Sing on your hypocrite and choir, hypocrite. Lead the choir, hypocrite. Direct the choir, hypocrite. Be the organ player and the band leader, hypocrite. Be the pastor of the church, hypocrite. But this is what's going to happen to you, hypocrite. Our name shall be forgotten. Your in name. Shall be forgotten in time. Amen. Amen. That's something, brother. Why? Before I found thee. In the belly I knew thee. He know all about you. God ain't got to figure you out. He ain't got to figure you out. He knew this day would come. That's right. That he has sent me to you. <laughs> That's right. That statement just made some of you mad. That's right. Amen. Amen. God knew that this day will come. Amen. That he has sent me to you. Who am I? Nothing. <laughs> you think you're somebody? No, I don't. I'm nothing. nothing. In fact, I'm less than nothing. Less than nothing. I'm just a puppet. That's right. My puppet master just move on me. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Make my mouth come open. Yes. Puppet master, get my hand. That's right. That's right. Take the other hand. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you get what I'm telling you? Amen. Yes. Wonderful, brother. You're less than a less than nothing. piece of dust. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you people realize, it doesn't matter how much money you have. No. One thing about the rich folk that are watching you, rich folk that are watching me now, yeah. who think you better than poor folk, mm. you ain't. You, you're not. Okay. Come on. There is no worm set aside for rich folk. And a lower class of worms set aside, set aside for poor folk. No. You ignorant rich people. You go spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for a casket and for a special vault. That's right. Scared of gay, uh, grave robbers. Yeah. Don't you know them worms going to form in you? Well, Pastor Jenner, what'll happen if we make it airtight? Are you really that blind? You see, you don't, uh, you, you, you fail to understand the wisdom of God. Yeah. The worms are already in your flesh. That's right. Give me the book. In the book of the Old book. Testament, let's see when God invaded Egypt and see what happened when the lice yes. came down there. Yeah. And see what the Bible says about the lice. Right. You know that left off? Can you imagine that? Frogs and waters turned to blood and Lice come on down there in yes. Egypt, and uh, I want to show you what's in your flesh. In the book of Exodus chapter 8. Hear this. Exodus chapter 8, and we're at verse 16. What is it? And the Lord said unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod. Stretch out your rod. And smite the dust of the land. Focus yeah. on the language of scripture. Uh -huh. Amen. Stretch out thy rod. Smite. And smite the dust. The dust. Of the land. Of the earth. 
that it may become life. That it may become life throughout all the land of Egypt. Throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod. Yes. And smote the dust of the earth. Yes. And it became lice in man and in beasts. Hold it. Amen. You see, the folks overlooked that. Overlooked that. What did it tell Moses to smite? Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land. Wait a minute. Smite what? The dust of the land. The moment he says smite the dust of the land. Amen. When Moses smote the dust of the land, yeah. he hit man. That's right. He hit woman. Right. He hit beast. That's right. Why? It is written, dust go back, back to, to dust. dust. And notice where the lice was discovered. And it became lice in man. It became lice where? In man. Where? In man. Where else? And in beasts. Why? Because beast and man is dust. All the dust of the land. What? All the dust of the land. The folks don't lice. see that. All the dust of the land. Not, uh, not only the ground, but the ground that breathes. That, that's right. He made man from the dust of the ground. That's right. You got ground you walk on, then you got ground that talk. That's right. We are the ground that talk. Talking ground, walk on ground. Yeah. Mm. We are talking ground that walks on ground. Go ahead, man. The ground we walked on turned the lice, That's and right. the ground that walk on the ground, that was lice. All the dust of the land. All of it. Became lice throughout all the That's land. That's what you didn't Egypt. see, viewers. You didn't see that. And notice where it says it was located. And smote the dust of the earth, and, and it became life. Come on, son. In man. Where? And, in man. And where else? And in beasts. All the dust of the land. All the dust of the land. All of it. Became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Do you see that? Amen. So this is why you can't hide from the worms. That's right. Because That's right. God called you a worm. That's right. He said, where the worm dieth die not. Not. Where the fire shall not be quenched. That's why you can get any airtight vault all you want. That's right. The worms automatically come crawling out of your skin. The womb shall forget him. Here, 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 here now. In the book of Job, chapter 24, and at verse 20. The womb. Shall forget him. Where you come from won't remember you. The worm. The worm. Shall feed sweetly shall on feed him. Shall feed sweetly on him. He shall be no more remembered. Yeah, and he's going to forget all about you. And wickedness shall be as a broken tree. All right, viewers. You're nothing but hard head, stubborn, cigarette sucking, dice rolling, beer guzzling, pipe smoking, liquor drinking, fingernail shining, lipstick wearing, wig wearing, miniskirt wearing, skin tight pants, dust. Dust, that's right. That's right. That's all. That's all. I don't care about your celebrity status. In fact, I don't care about nobody's celebrity status. No. You're going to die soon. Oh, yes. And if you don't obey God, they can have the nicest funeral. Your husband can buy the biggest flowers or the wife can buy all kind of flowers for the husband. Right. Or she can say, I don't want him put in the casket yet. I want him the, I, I, I want the undertaker because they're doing this now too, you know. They've taken the dead mother and father and sons and daughters, and before they put them in a casket there, the uh, undertaker will put clothes on the body and then have them propped up sitting at a table. My Lord. You see them all over YouTube. They had this one fella, My Lord. young fella, sitting at the table at a card game <laughs> with a blunt in his hand. My Lord. They dress you all up with caps, foot, yeah, with suits, dressed like a pimp. My Lord. I remember in Jet Magazine in the 70s when I was a kid, some fella died. They had a custom-made coffin, looked like a Cadillac Seville. That's true. And uh, coming out the front of the, of the casket was a steering wheel, and they had him with a big brim on and gloves with his hands on the steering wheel of the casket. You ain't going to ride in the grave. <laughs> no, no. You people can go overboard all you want. Right. Look, do whatever you want. If you don't repent of your sins, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me good. Yeah. If you don't repent, repent, be convicted for your wrong. Yeah. Be sorry about your sins. That's right. Repent, repent for them. That's right. Then you got to be baptized. baptized. 
Who? Everybody. That's right. Glory to God in the name of Jesus Christ. Then you got to seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit. That's when God come in you. Yeah. Speaking in another language, you have the Spirit of God give utterance. Oh, yes. Then you got to begin to learn the holy teaching of heaven. That's right. That keeps you in check with him. Oh, yes. Without that, Without your mother's loss, your pastor, right. your church organization, oh, yeah. all of you that have been baptized, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, it ain't none of you saved. That's right. None of you. None of you. You got to do it like the Bible says do it. That's right. And the Bible said repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You got to call the name. That's right. Of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Not say Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Right. Jesus said do it in the name. Yeah. And the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is Jesus and he's the Christ. That's right. Peter said in Acts 38, what? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Here it is. Amen. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sin. What did he promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And? For the promise is unto you. And to who else? And to your children. And to those? And to all that are far off. Even as many. As the Lord our God shall call. And the scripture says, the Lord hath spoken. He hath called the whole earth yeah. from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Remember, viewer, God know who you are. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. Ain't none of you putting anything over on God. No. Make all your money you want, but you're going to die like everybody else, and you're going to stand before God. The preacher can give you any type of home going. That's fine, but That's if you fine. haven't obeyed God, your home going to be in hell. That's right. You don't want to hear that. You don't want to even think of that, but <laughs> you're going. That's right. Why? Because you're doing what it takes to go. Yeah. Anybody here want to be right? And be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet if you want it today. Hallelujah. If you want to be baptized, wonderful. All of you that are standing, follow that brother over there. Yeah, and sisters also. Hallelujah. All right. God gave us all something good. Amen. Now, viewers, you remember now. All of you that is in Europe. You that is in Holland and Scotland and Ireland and Amsterdam and Netherlands and Germany and yeah. Birmingham and London and Italy, other places, God willing, we're looking to be seeing you in a few weeks if it be the Lord's will. Everybody, I hope to see you in July. Make your plans now. Amen. Bring your second wife so I can run away from you. Amen. You come on now. <laughs> this is the message for the last days God knows. Oh, yes. Let us all stand. We'll be back, God willing, at 5 o'clock. And I want to say I need about 75 to 100 sisters. Please don't waste time. Give the secretary your help. We got a big convention coming up, and the secretary is asking for help, and the Bible says... Well, help us on one another. Everybody go over there in the gym and uh, at least about 75 to 100 sisters. You ain't got to ask, are you going? You go. <laughs> and be a help. All right, Brother Williams going to close us out with prayer. We'll be back, God willing, at 5 o'clock. Father God, we do come to you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, again for the wisdom of God that was taught in our hearing. Bless us now, Father God, not only to be hearers, but bless us to be doers of thine word. Remember the man of God. Continue to strengthen him and bless him and protect him. Continue to have your word in his mouth, O oh God. Let many, my God, come and hear the gospel. Bless them to repent of their sins and be baptized in water. In the name of Jesus Christ and fill those with the Holy Ghost. Remember all of us that are here today. Strengthen us in our hearts and our minds. Help us, O oh Father God, to be able to stand and strive lawfully. We thank you, Father God, for your divine wisdom. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for your great power. We thank you, Father, for everything that you've been to us and for all that you've done for us. We do pray and ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.